Welcome back and thank you for making us the number one breakfast show in the country. Now, the education sector has been in the news over tuition increment and recent divisions by a school in Iganga to block students from sitting their UACE exams, but has just revived the tuition increment issue at Makere. But should education be for profit? Should government be subsidizing um, private players who are providing education in this country? Joining us for a discussion in this and more, we have Honorable Joy Otimongom, no. a member of Parliament. Parliament Education Committee and Woman MP Lira and Honorable Leandro Komakech, the MP Gulu Municipality, also a member of the Education Mo Committee right there. Now, let me start with you, Mr. Leandro Komakech. First off, what is happening and what is on the ground? Well, uh, I just need a, a slight correction. I, you're, the mem I, you're a member on the Human, well, Human, Human Rights, Rights Committee, Committee yeah, of Parliament. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, moderator and uh, my colleague, Moni. Morning, viewers. Uh, I start by stating that the right to education was enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948. Mm -hmm. and under Article 126, the right to education is very fundamental to the full development of a personality. And that is why we look at education as a tool for human development. In Uganda, we have enshrined these rights in our bills of rights. As, uh, when you read the constitution, it's very clear. And other conventions, plus our national development plans, they're very clear on issues of education. Now, to facilitate achievement of these, we must ensure that institutions that are responsible to enhance these are in place. And that is why we have the various institutions, we have those that direct the curriculum, those that ensure that the learning is done, and those who monitor that this should be completed. Mm -hmm. And that is why we have various courses that facilitate the development of an individual, mm -hmm. right from nursery, sec uh, primary, secondary, university, and all that. Now, the context in Uganda is strange. As a member of Human Rights Committee, my colleague on education will tell you deeply, that uh, we have witnessed development of education in Uganda through many processes. When the British were in power, they dealt, they introduced some of these things formally. When you read the war report of the 50s, it kind of gives you the details in which uh, education should, should be achieved in Uganda. Then later on, many other reports came to ensure that the quality of education uh, is good and should be accessible. I think the fundamental one was the 1989 Kajubi report that came with very fundamental aspects on how we can develop our education system that goes beyond the 21st century. And this were, was taken by government uh, in the context of the blueprint that was later on produced as a white paper. Now, we are from 1989 to date, that is what we're doing. But I think the emerging challenges that are coming within the education sector are now indicators that we need to, to do a stock mm -hmm. audit. We need to have a review of the extent to which we have implemented this print. What is emerging from the schools indicates that the quality of, uh, of inspection is going down, mm -hmm. has gone down. When you look at in terms of how we open up from 1992 when uh, the World Bank uh, uh, report was adopted and the policy was taken that liberalism should be at the center stage of determining how we allocate resources in terms of education. That is why we introduce private initiatives from many entities to enter into the sector of education. We should take note that education is a public good. Education is not in any way an economic good. But the context of practicing in Uganda today is beginning to indicate that actually education is an economic good. It is out in, in the market, and therefore the market forces should determine how it should be allocated. Now, this is the danger in which we go in. Government should regulate on how education in this country should be managed. 
government should regulate on how best exactly. education in this country should be managed. Let's exactly. first leave it at that note, yeah. Mr. Leandro, and I engage Honorable Joy Atim Ongom, woman named Pete Lira, and also a member of the Parliament's uh, Committee on Education. Now, Ms. Ongom, let's talk about the issue of uh, government-aided schools that keep on increasing their tuition despite being uh, subsidized by government. Do you think this is right? And do you think this is a human rights violation because it discriminates the poor when they keep on increasing tuition without consulting the parents first? Yeah. Um, once again, my name is Joya Timongom, the woman member of parliament for Lira District. And uh, I sit in the Committee of Education. Yeah, I appreciate uh, the role of government uh, to provide the education for its citizen. And uh, as the Honorable has just told you, it is enshrined in the Constitution that there is the right to education. But uh, the unfortunate bit of it is what you are talking of, where the public institutions, government schools, keep on increasing uh, the fees from time to time, and they don't care who is being left behind and who is proceeding. It's unfortunate, most especially for the government schools, that government provides, and it's government that pays the staff, it is government that buys the books, and it is government that is supposed, it is the role of government to, you know, provide all those. But also government is not doing its obligation. A case in point uh, with the USC schools, where government is giving very little and it is up on the school now to levy on the students to compensate or to complement what government so is does supposed to justify what the schools are doing um that uh other other schools are doing that mm -hmm. to complement what government is supposed to do mm -hmm. it is government who is entirely supposed to do all these things mm -hmm. but because government is not uh, really fulfilling its obligation mm -hmm. so some schools are doing that, mm -hmm. just to complement what uh, really government is entirely supposed to do. Let's see a situation in the U UPE. Mm -hmm. How dare you pay? Is it 4,000? And you want chocks to be there? You want uh, the toilets to be done? And you want the classes to desk and the rest of it? It's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. So. Actually, in a real sense, they're supposed to consult the parents. Mm -hmm. That's why there is PTA. Mm -hmm. So that uh, really, PTA should interact with the management and they see what they're doing. But you know, these schools just impose fees on the parents and uh, they don't want to consult mm -hmm. in any way. Mm -hmm. A case in point is this one, which is happening at Macquarie University. Whom did they consult, for example? And it has queries. It has a lot of question mm -hmm. marks. It, it has queries, but the management of Macquarie University contends that they did consult the student leaders about this increment before it was passed. I'm telling you there are a lot of issues mm -hmm. on that 15% increment. I hope us understand. Um, when we interacted with the students, mm -hmm. yes, they went to benchmark. And they came with... Uh, because the, the, the institution had, uh, the university had uh, proposed that 15%, and they went to other institutions, to other countries to benchmark. Mm -hmm. But they had not yet, you know, given to the rest of the students to, mm -hmm. to uh, they have not presented to them. Mm -hmm. The university just took it from them, and that was it. They had not discussed to come with the nitty gritty, the merits of it. Mm -hmm. Like a case in point, they didn't want. Uh, the 15 percent to be uh, levied on uh, on uh, on the, which is this? Um, the tuition? No, not the tuition. There's another fees. Functional. Functional, functional, functional fees. fees. The yeah. 15 percent was not yeah. supposed to be charged on the functional fees, mm -hmm. but already they are charging on the functional fees. It was dropped. They just maintained uh, the increment on tuition. Then they said the 15 percent was not supposed to be charged on every increment. They mm -hmm. didn't want it to be, they want a base. Mm -hmm. Not that if you increase 
from 1.3, 15% on 1.3 mm -hmm. is going to be 1.8, mm -hmm. then again 15% on the 1.8 to be 2.3, then 15% on the 2.3. By the end of the four, the five years, the students will be paying about four million. And it seems plus. like right now the NRM caucus uh, circumvented the Parliament's Committee on Education, and now the 15 increment is there to stay. Um, that's why the Speaker of Parliament yesterday had to say mm -hmm. the NRM caucus doesn't need to undermine the role of Parliament. Mm -hmm. If the Education Committee has been given the task to investigate, why then do you do SAP and you want to impose it to the whole of Parliament and to Ugandans? Mm -hmm. Give Parliament their mandate to investigate and come up with their reports. Mm -hmm. NRM is a sector only and it is not even part of Parliament. Mm -hmm. They are, they are, they are, I mean, they are, their resolution should not be binding to Parliament. So this was a usurpation of your powers by the NRM caucus? It's like they're usurping, but we are yet to go and report mm -hmm. because we have got our findings as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Honorable Leandro, do you think what we saw at the university with the security of, of officials roughing up the students, does it turn amount to human rights violations? Yeah, definitely. If you looked at the footages. And I if it does, yeah, yeah. and you're well, part of that committee on yeah. human rights, what yeah. are you doing in that regard to rein in all well, these officers? Well, we, we as well are investigating the aspect of the violations of rights. Mm -hmm. And uh, you already see within the education sector, when students are not given the environment to learn, that is one of the greatest, and people should be resigning. I'm telling you, yeah. people should be resigning. <laughs> education is not a simple thing. It's a tool to make sure that an individual becomes good. That is the only opportunity where a poor person has capacity to rise through the ranks and be among those who can succeed in life. It is because of education. Now, for Makeri University, if you look at the militarization of Makeri University since 1992, when the, when the attack was met on, uh, on the students in the, in the square, mm -hmm. To date, it has been very consistent. Why? Because some of these policies we are implementing are not in tandem with the, the capacity of the economy. Look at the increment. Already we know that government decided that revenue authorities should be the one to collect school fees. When did this start? How can Uganda Revenue Authority become the institution for collection of fees? We thought that universities should be given independent rights to be self-accounting to that to the extent that they only report to the Minister of Education. Now, when they collect fees, it goes into the main stream of the accounts. Now, when the university requests for money to be given back to them, it is not given in the percentage that was remitted in terms of fees. Mm -hmm. So the end result is that there are gaps that are glaring. What we need, and what I would request the Committee of Education to, to look further is, is it possible that if fees are collected, fees should remain with the university, mm -hmm. and they spend it at that mm -hmm. point. But right now, if the increment is made at 15%, and it is Uganda Revenue Authority collecting the same, the result is that it will depend on priorities of government. Yeah. Whatever is remitted to, mm -hmm. to Makere University will still be that percentage that is remitted. The end result is that even the 15% will not have any effect in improving anything there. And that is why the students are, yeah. are, are striking. Why don't we leave the university to use what they collect as resources from the private students and uh, what they get from the government-sponsored students to run the university? Across the country, if you look at the, the high institutions, we need an overview, serious review, stock taking and we see how we move forward otherwise what the students are responding to are a challenge where they have reached the brink mm. we should know that these parents who pay fees are also citizens of this country we should know the the cost of living in this country the standard of living the capacity of the economy where we are we may say if you cannot do Makere university go and try you see you it's like in the French Revolution, Maria when Maria Antoinette said that if you cannot uh, mm. eat bread, go and try biscuits. Cakes. Go and eat cakes. <laughs> now, this is not acceptable. Yes. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. The government mm -hmm. of Uganda should put its feet down and <clears throat> accept reality 
that we need to deal with these things. Mm -hmm. These students are citizens of this country. Mm -hmm. yeah. We should look at them as well as the, the critical leaders of tomorrow. If we who are in this government today went through education without any cost, mm -hmm. but government stood in for everything, why don't we pay back by having a moderate way of how our children in this country can run? Look at Norway. Mm -hmm. The only country in, in, in the whole world that has implemented the Universal Declaration of Human Rights from nursery to master's program mm -hmm. is paid by government. Mm -hmm. Government only now go ahead to say, do your PhD through other resources. And in Norway, if a child is found at home not going to school, the parents are all taken to court and jailed. That used to happen uh, in Uganda at some point. We need it back. <laughs> we need <laughs> Maybe the problem was implementation, but it used to happen. So, Honorable Atim, you've interacted with the University Council at, at Macquarie University. What did they have to say with all these allegations? Um, they have <laughs> their own perspectives. Mm -hmm. One, uh, the issue that came was uh, the statement where a personal assistant of the VC is terrorizing both the students and the staff. Mm -hmm. But uh, the council is saying they're going to investigate that. And for us, we also have our perspective. How dare somebody's personal assistant goes with a pistol in the school and is the one who orders and say, if you say this, then you will not be here. You'll be eliminated out of this institution. What is this role as a personal assistant? So those are that. And then when we ask about um, the issue of uh, the army terrorizing students, first of all, why do you have, uh, is it a, a brigade or a battalion at, at the university? Mm. What for? They said they had only deployed about 30. But the VC is saying he was not consulted when these people were doing mm. deployment. And these people are saying they have been there for the last more than five years, mm -hmm. they had deployed there. We asked the, this team that came to invade the institution, came from outside out is the same team. For them, they cannot answer that. So mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it, there are a lot of questions mm -hmm. at the university. Mm -hmm. And we are asking, and I am still appealing to the university students, because we want to know those that had been raped or just, uh, you know, brutalized. A few of them are not coming up. But also, I am a woman. Mm -hmm. When I am raped, it is not easy for me to come and disclose to every Tom, Jack, and, you know? So you're Jew. saying some women right there at Macquarie University some, might be suffering some in silence. Some of them are suffering in silence, and, but we are saying we are there, we are available. Please come and really make us know what happened so that we help you and also we help the rest of the students mm -hmm. to come. Indeed. Don't conceal. Indeed. Now, this problem that got us here, the tuition increment has been backed by the NRM caucus. Does that mean dialogue with the students is now out? I'm telling you, we are still in insisting what the speaker said. Parliament is parliament, and mm -hmm. it is autonomous, mm -hmm. and it is supreme, by the way. There is no way NRM caucus can come with that resolution and mm -hmm. we say it is sealed. Mm -hmm. It is not sealed. It is upon us to, uh, to present it on the floor of parliament, mm -hmm. And then the House debates, mm -hmm. and then we come up with our resolution. Let's, let's wait on that. Now, Honorable Leandro Kumakech, let's talk about the issue that has been making rounds this week. I've been waiting, uh, saving this for last. The issue of the Iganga top care students that were barred from sitting their exams. Do you think the human rights were actually violated by schools, by this school, when it barred them? Yeah, the, it, is, it is very clear. Uh, as we say, y you cannot struggle against common sense. Uh, these are students who pay fees. Government introduced private schools, but private schools are managed by government. Now, I think it is very important that there are methodologies that should be put in place, mechanisms through which certain processes are done. It is very, very unfortunate. Even when you read the, the Uganda National Examinations Board Act, uh, if even when you look at the guidelines in the Ministry of Education, uh, sitting a national examination is, is fundamentally very, very important for any student that is being examined on a course 
that someone has done. From primary living to certificate of O-level to advance of, of A-level and, and, and all else. Mm -hmm. Now, school fees has been deposited, not all. There are those who may have not completely paid, but they have been allowed by the school to be registered mm -hmm. to sit. Now, the students are saying, we have even written, committed. Mm -hmm. Parents have gone to school. Mm -hmm. uh, the examination is done once in a year. Mm -hmm. and, and if you don't do it, that means that you go and sit out there for another one year or repeat. Mm -hmm. and now, now, that is when you see that violations are being done. Yeah. To bar uh, a student because of money, and which money has been even deposited, mm -hmm. there's something. So in the near future, we will be seeing any kind of legislation. Yeah, and no, we need to take it very seriously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That uh, first of all, we 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 need to have uh, uh, the education committee mm -hmm. to visit some of these uh, secondary schools, and we need to bring the inspectorate of, of of education to the limelight, and even the commission of education, both primary and secondary, to say how do we license these private schools? W what are the guidelines? What are the conditions? Even government schools, there are those that have also been doing it. And I know them. I don't want to start uh, opening up here Pandora box. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's already open. Yeah, the, Andrew, you can you can go ahead. When you look at what so far has been done to the 16, mm -hmm. and to those that have not be even been captured in the press, there are many. Mm -hmm. We need as leaders of this country to take a very serious position on what is going on. We need to take a very serious. And position. today, <laughs> that is why when I raised this issue in Parliament yesterday on the floor. Uh, the Minister of Education was requested to respond. But the one that stood in f on behalf of the Minister was just making casual remarks. So the good thing we have someone and from today, the Education Committee. Yeah, yeah. So let's engage Honorable Atem. Exactly. Honorable Tim, should private schools be putting profit first before service? Private schools yes. are not, are not uh, profit-making organizations. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to provide service. That's what they're supposed to be, but they're not doing that. So what do we do now? And what the Honourable Members just told you is that Parliament and Government has got to put its feet down mm -hmm. and to really assess and monitor the mm -hmm. activities that are being done in the private schools and even in government schools. Mm -hmm. The Sustainable Development Goals states that no one should be left behind. Mm -hmm. Why do others sit and they're pursuing their education and you're limiting somebody? You're denying somebody the right to education. Mm -hmm. Why? And what obligation, what contract did the school have with the students? They have contract with the parents. The child needed, the student needed to see it. There are a, ne a, a number of remedies that could be handled. Mm -hmm. If the students sat the papers, recommendations, they would come to school. Slips are still there, they would come to school. And even the certificates, they would still come to school. There is no way they can go to your lab to access their certificates when they have not got any recommendation from their schools. So 50,000 sh shillings mm -hmm. can uh, let you not allow the student to sit. Mm -hmm. That is criminal. Mm -hmm. And I condemn the acts of the, D I mean the DPC, the RDC, and the LC5. They went to that school, they could have taken uh, action. Mm -hmm. How do they go to negotiate and they still deny the student not to sit mm -hmm. because of 50,000 shillings? Mm -hmm. I think government have got to follow that school critically. Mm -hmm. And the rest of these schools that are punishing students, it's not accepted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the head teacher of Colo SS did say that the reason they do ask for this money is because uh, said, uh, these exams are really expensive. In the event of only 30 students who are sitting for practicals, they would need like 32 million shillings. And that's why he was saying they need to collect this money earlier to be able to do that. But then other head teachers, like the one for Kakungul Memorial, was saying for him, he does listen to their parents and he, he, he hears their problems. And then that's how he charts a way forward. We've also seen Janet Museveni come out to say that that uh, these schools shouldn't be doing this and they should stop hence with. But what, these are just words, people just coming out to talk. But we haven't seen any policy being put forward to protect these students. So maybe some political analysts are proposing that government should subsidize these private players to help them. Yes. Um, I think uh, the first lady who is the Minister of Education mm -hmm. needed to be very serious. Mm -hmm. Making statements and not acting will never work. And also where there are serious issues, you are delegating somebody. You don't come on board as you 
to act as a minister and a senior minister, that is not acceptable. I still call upon her, really, that you are a woman who is responsible and you have been charged with the duty, you know, to handle issues of the Minister of Education. Please put your feet down and let issues of education progress, not regress. We are not happy with what is happening in the uh, sector of education. Then two, uh, the private players, especially in the education and even in the health, but in education are being taxed, you know? Mm -hmm. They are being taxed. Mm -hmm. Why should you tax the private institutions, especially education, mm -hmm. which is a right? Mm -hmm. Why do you tax? They have to pay taxes for even signposts. Mm -hmm. They have to pay. And also when it comes to examinations, they are charged. Mm -hmm. So they have to put that charge also on what? On mm -hmm. the students, yeah. which, which student cannot afford. Mm -hmm. That's why we are saying government, I mean parliament has got to review mm -hmm. what is happening. Mm -hmm. Because now the private schools are just supplementing or they're complementing what mm -hmm. government in a real sense mm -hmm. is supposed to have mm -hmm. done. And when you went to the public institutions, they are there for their sake. Mm -hmm. They're not doing the right things. Mm -hmm. The ones that are trying to do, like uh, the Gayaza, like the Budu, are again overcharging. Mm -hmm. And they're not doing it as a public institution, like a public school. Mm -hmm. You know, they are like private in nature. And that one came on the floor of parliament. Why do government senior secondary schools charge so much when their teachers are being paid? Everything is being provided for them, but they overcharge. Mm -hmm. And government is just looking on, mm -hmm. and they're not acting. Then the rest of these other secondary schools down there, mm -hmm. up country, are just you know, they are just surviving on the money that is provided by government, the USA. Mm -hmm. And they cannot do anything. Mm -hmm. All these teachers came from the same institution. The staff, the teacher from Budo, were trained together with that staff of Masakan for Lira. But you find that the Budo one is performing very well, and the one of Lira or the one of uh, Gulo is not performing mm -hmm. very well. As government come up mm -hmm. to assess and to see what is happening mm -hmm. in these institutions. Mm -hmm. What is it? Is it because they're being paid highly eh? mm -hmm. at Budu and they're paid less? All these are paid by government. Mm -hmm. Then there is some additional incentive, incentive I think, that uh, the Budu are giving that Lira mm -hmm. or Gulu is not mm -hmm. giving. So what is it? Can we see the priority in teachers? If it is a matter of salary, can government increase the salary of staff? Mm -hmm. This idea of saying, uh, uh, or, or science teachers should be paid mm -hmm. much higher than the arts teachers. It's mm -hmm. not acceptable. No. That is discrimination. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes somebody relaxes. Mm -hmm. Somebody relax and will not perform. Mm -hmm. You are buying from the same market. You are being supervised by the same head teacher. You are going to the same class. But when it comes to payment, you are being paid differently. And you are, they want you to perform, you know, Better. Understood, Honorable Tim. Let me just uh, engage Mr. Leandro. Mr. Leandro, some people contend that, hey, what these schools did was wrong, but then how do we expect these schools to continue running if they, have any, if they don't have any sort of funding or if these students do not pay their dues? Uh, they also contend that uh, most of these students were summoned and their parents to come explain what the problem was, why they were not able to meet. Uh, yes, they were not able to pay the tuition, but then the head teachers contend that they were silent until examination day when they showed up to do the exams. Yes, they keep quiet, and then the students come around on examination but day for the exams. I will not accept yeah. that. You know, there are, process, there are a number of things that happen in school. Mm -hmm. Students do internal exams. Were these children not, students not doing internal exams? Mm -hmm. And then they do mock. Were they not doing mock in that school? Mm -hmm. Did they only surface to do exams? You mean they were not, are they the scholars? Mm -hmm. Were they not reporting at mm -hmm. the school? Were they not interacting with mm -hmm. these students? They should have told them and they should not, they should not have registered these students. Mm -hmm. But in a situation where they did internal exams, they did mock, mm -hmm. you registered them, you, they went for a, a briefing, mm -hmm. and then when it came to the final exams, you deny them. Mm -hmm. No, that's Hon not Honorable acceptable. Leandro, if yes. these private schools are saying the reason we keep on um, mounting pressure on the parents to pay in time is because we need funding for these examinations, shouldn't government in this case subsidize the private players? That one. Yeah, I think, uh, my brother, uh, the issue is very clear that the percentage that we are talking about is not 50%. 
is, is not 60%, it's just 3%. Uh, that government is doing. Yeah. Now, the, the school administrations, the private ones, I think, notwithstanding the amount of money that is collected, I think administratively, even if these kids had not paid a single coin, it would not fail the school to run. Now, to come and defend that because the 50, 16 students have not paid, so the whole school is paralyzed, we cannot do anything, is hogwash. Mm -hmm. What we need to be focusing at is, now that this problem is in the open, is for us to review on how we are going to manage schools. These children have given us the worst lessons. We should learn to improve how learning should be facilitated. Yes, we accepted private players to come in. But I think private players came in because government failed in many ways to manage the public mm -hmm. schools. Mm -hmm. This is also the time to begin to review mm -hmm. how public schools are run alongside private schools. This is the time to review how private and government yes. schools are run. Hold yeah, on let me give yes. you in the past. Yes. Uh, in the past, even private schools were not heard of. Those who ran private schools really ran it, and it was so difficult. To and there were teachers from government aided yeah, schools yeah, yeah. that would, yeah, know, would go and support the them. private mm -hmm. schools. Yes. It is because we have failed in our policy in running public schools that we have deliberately created environments where everybody has turned education into economic mm -hmm. good. Now, that is where we should start from. Mm -hmm. Why is it that anyone from Lira would go to Butobere High School, study from there, mm -hmm. and the transport was affordable, everybody was going everywhere? Mm -hmm. But now, even in a, private, in a public school, you cannot afford to move into the next distance. Mm -hmm. So there's something critical that we need to review. Mm -hmm. Possibly government should admit that in the area of education, we have failed. Mm -hmm. It is very important to ad admit we shall debate this today in Parliament. I think the end result is that every parent in this country should, fo should have a feeling that my child is going to school, mm -hmm. my child in future will achieve something. Mm -hmm. But if you see that the future in this country is not possible, then what else do you think? Should be done. Thank so you very much, our responsibility. Let's leave it at that note. Let me engage Honorary Batim. Now, some uh, political analysts contend that one of the solutions that could have been met at Iganga Top Care School before barring the students would have been to let them sit for the exams and maybe withhold the certificate which they can later access at UNEB, but they didn't do this. So, in your opinion, what are the other solutions that we are looking at, you yourself as the Parliament Committee on Education, to rein in the situation? Yeah, um... We, as the Committee of Education, I think uh, that is already an eye-opener mm -hmm. that uh, we feel we should go to those schools, mm -hmm. to that school and other schools to monitor the situation and also to interact with them and also to interface with the Ministry of Education. And we come up with uh, maybe a one or two areas that they have to improve in their policy of education. Mm -hmm. So what areas do they have to improve? Um, for one, you know, I think uh, the private schools are uh, fear because when results come, most of the people, inter they, they get their results through, 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 through their phones and the rest of it on internet. They, they, they access their results. Mm -hmm. But accessing results is not enough. Somebody has got to get the sleep, mm -hmm. somebody has got to get the certificate and the rest of it. So areas around policy mm -hmm. needed to be mm -hmm. improved mm -hmm. how the private players have got to work and how government have got to supplement and also to help the private players mm -hmm. in what they're doing mm -hmm. yeah those are some of the areas that needed to and also areas of inspection mm -hmm. also needed to be improved mm -hmm. those are some of the areas and if public institutions and public schools could do better. Mm -hmm. Government can pay them well and also give the provisions very well in the public schools. Then issues of private would not even arise. Such issues would not arise. And, uh, Leandro, yeah. yes. uh, some of the, the, the teachers and also the directors yes. of such schools mm -hmm. also needed to be vetted. Mm -hmm. Are they their prof profit? Are they service, service providers? If you are for service, then you don't need to see money as, uh, you know, that's a very, very important thing. Voting that head teachers, yes. I actually welcome that very, very much. Yes. Uh, Honorable Leandro, we are talking solutions as we wrap up. The issue of uh, government-aided schools that continue to hike their tuition, what can we do right now to rein in on these schools? 
No, I think it's very simple. We, we, we need to review the school the fee structures in the country and, and look at why is it that they are the way they are and come back to how it used to be that if you are going to a government school, this is the basic fees. This is the of flat. Of course, yeah, it's cross-cutting. But of course, a few requirements that mm -hmm. are functional that cannot in any way discriminate. That's what we have to get back to. And once that is done, we shall also be automatically regulating how private schools are done. But today, in the whole country, there is a belief that it is only within Kampala region that is where success for education is done. Mm -hmm. When you go in the countryside, everybody is boarding a bus mm -hmm. to come to Kampala. We should begin to see how do we get back to how it used to be. That if you are in Gulu, you are just as equal as anybody in Kampala mm -hmm. or in Kabale or in, in Tororo, in anywhere. Mm -hmm. But now, the amount of money that parents struggle to get and bring to the center here mm -hmm. is astronomical. Mm -hmm. So I think this is time we need to say, Minister of Education, Government of Uganda, Parliament, can we regulate and put a fee structure that, mm -hmm. that speaks to, to the rest of the country? Mm -hmm. That is also measured in terms of the cost of living that also fits into the interests of our poor people in the countryside. Mm -hmm. And of course, gov uh, private schools, they are, mm -hmm. they, they, they are kind of complementing mm -hmm. what government is doing. Mm -hmm. I support them. Mm -hmm. But what we need is, to what extent should private schools also have a way that make them very relevant. Mm -hmm. Not to say that they are in there for business. And then proprietors of private schools. I think we also need to start reviewing who should open a private school. Because sometimes when you look at proprietorship, you find that those who are running uh, the, the private schools even never went to school. Those who are running some private yes, schools some. never <laughs> went to wow. school. So, so how do you wow. become a model of education wow. to say that you cannot run a school? Well, thank, so, thank so you very much, Honorable Leandro, for that revelation. Honorable, revelation. Honorable team, we are talking about uh, solutions. Now, in the case of Macquarie University, let's first take a look at the financial solution right there. Some political analysts contend that one of the solutions would be creation of a third party, like an institution out of Macquarie University, to handle the issue of collection of fees, in that the money accrued from collection of fees is used to develop the university, not to go to other, you know, agencies. Uh, what do you make of that? Do you find that as a viable solution to collection of fees at Macquarie, which would in turn be used to develop the university itself than the current system? Um, uh, I will answer that, but I still want to talk to what uh, Honorable Leandro said. We've run out said. of time though. Yes, in, in, in yes. a few seconds. Yeah. yeah, in a few seconds. I'm one of the proprietors of a private primary mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. And uh, a situation where somebody has not gone to school is coming to open mm -hmm. a school is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Ministry of Education also vets mm -hmm. some of those yeah, students. But in this, this particular yes, case, yeah. <laughs> in this particular case, um, students contend mm -hmm. that uh, they are increasing the fee structure but the service that they are getting is too, too low, especially in the girls' hostel. The toilets are too no, bad. Not tuition, but the third party to collect yes, fees. Yes, yes, the toilets is are so feasible? bad. So we are saying... Yes or no? No, okay, it is feasible. It is very it's, feasible. It is very feasible. So let's leave it at that because we've run out of time. Thank you very much. Honorable Atim Ongom, Angom Joy. Thank you very much. You're Thank the you. woman MP Lira. And mm. then we also had Honorable Leandro Kumakech, the Gulu Municipality MP. He's also a member of the Parliament uh, Committee on Human Rights. She's also a member of the Parliament Committee on Education. The issue we've been talking about today is the education sector and the issue of inc uh, fees that are being increased astronomically every every year not only that the issue at mccurry university and the issue of students being barred from sitting exams and that conversation has come to an end let's take another short breather we'll be right back